Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajana here, and today's talk is going to be on thyroid balance. Essentially, what does a healthy thyroid hormone response look like? I find all my patients that get the best success are the ones that are truly educated. So I want to give you a little bit of information about your thyroid, how it works, and what are the most common stressors or imbalances that throw the thyroid out of whack, so to speak. So first off, we have our thyroid stimulating hormone, which signals our thyroid gland to make T4. So T4 is produced mainly by a response from the pituitary that says make some T4. T4 is inactivated, so it's actually a storage hormone. It doesn't have much metabolic effect on the body. So what happens is T4 then gets converted into T3, ideally. And T3 is active thyroid hormone. There's other videos that will show, you know, there's a lot of things in between here that can affect optimal conversion. But in a perfect world, T4 gets converted to optimal levels of T3. It's important to note that only 2% of your thyroid hormone is actually active, meaning there is not a protein bounded to it. So 2% are protein free, so they are free thyroid hormone. They can actually bind in. So a healthy thyroid hormone binds into the catcher's mitts and creates a metabolic response, just like so. And in a perfect world, this is how our metabolism works. We produce healthy amounts of T4 due to TSH signaling. T4 then gets converted to T3. T3, the free percent of it, bind to our thyroid receptors and we have metabolic activity and all is well in the world. Now, when we have an unhealthy thyroid hormone response, especially in autoimmune thyroids such as Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, that thyroid hormone, again, T4 to T3, that gets converted. But the problem is, because of all the inflammation and all of the antibodies, we start having the receptor sites become impeded and blocked. So the thyroid hormone doesn't quite have the same effects. So remember, that baseball has to bind into that catcher's mitt to create a metabolic response. And it's important to note that almost 90% of thyroid problems are Hashimoto's, over 90%. That's really important. Because if we're not addressing the underlying autoimmunity, then patients aren't going to get better. That's why most patients aren't even checked for thyroid autoimmunity because it doesn't change the treatment. Whether you're autoimmune, you get Synthroid. If you're not autoimmune, you get Synthroid. So conventional medicine really isn't interested in looking at the underlying cause. All right, this is your thyroid gland. So what happens when you have an autoimmune attack, what you're going to see these little knives called antibodies. We have TPO antibodies, thyroid peroxidase, and we have thyroid binding globulins that are specific antibodies as well that literally attack the thyroid gland. And what happens is the little bits of thyroid hormone trickle out of these little berries that get burst, these little follicles, and thyroid hormone can fluctuate. In the beginning of these attacks, we can have hyperthyroid, high amounts of thyroid hormone. And over time, what will actually start to happen is we'll have less thyroid hormone because the gland is becoming fatigued. So these fluctuations of thyroid hormone can create abnormalities on lab tests. Someone who may have a Hashimoto's thyroid may show up hyper in the beginning. And medicine doesn't really quite know how to make of it. So they'll treat you like you're a Graves' disease patient in the beginning or a hyperthyroid patient. And then at the end, they'll treat you like a Hashimoto's patient. And you're kind of up and down and you're trying to get your meds right and you're you know, having hyperflexuations, you know, um, anxiety, accelerated heart rate, sweating. And then sometimes at the end, you're going to be feeling more depressed. You're going to have constipation, hair falling out, fatigue, um, cold fingers and, and feet. So this becomes a, a roller coaster ride for the patient because we're not doing the right testing. So essentially what happens here is we have inflammation, right? This whole autoimmune attack is creating inflammation. And over time, we have our TSH here. We have our time over here. So over time, conventional medicine is only looking at TSH. So in the beginning of these thyroid attacks, TSH may be normal. And then over time, it steadily raises. But you may not show up positive until 5, 8, 10 years up on a basic TSH test. So you're not going to show up positive on a TSH test until 8 or 10 years later. So they're waiting to such a end degree of stage of uh, thyroid issues that we could have done work so many years earlier to start reversing this. So you're undiagnosed for this whole period of time here, and they're waiting to such uh, a late degree in the game to even pick you up on their test. 
And this is really sad because if you're looking at TSH as a thyroid indicator of you know, imbalance, you're way behind the eight ball. Um, British Medical Journal has done research on this over 10 years ago showing that TSH is not a valid marker to really assess thyroid hormone activity. And here's a, for instance here, we can look at a previous patient. TSH is actually pretty good. 1.19 is not bad. T4 is creeping up on the low side. These would, the only, these would essentially be the only tests that a conventional medical doctor would look at. Most of the time, it's only TSH. Sometimes it's both. But you can see here, this person's highly autoimmune. So this person would fall through the cracks and has fallen through the cracks of conventional medicine for the last 10 years. And as we go back, what's really happening is this. The person is probably somewhere in here in the whole progression of things and is going to have to wait years longer for conventional medicine um, to catch it on a TSH. But in functional medicine world, we have all these great opportunities to catch things because we're running comprehensive functional medicine panels to look at the whole picture. It's really important important that we have the big picture perspective and I recommend finding a doctor that has that big picture perspective to help get you better. Uh, if you have any questions here feel free the information box below is available for you with all kinds of great free information for you and how you can get your thyroid assessed and looked at as well. Thanks. I hope you enjoy the video.